My topic today is Japan Korea China FTA after TPP. And uh, I've been still working on it. But uh, uh, if only the TPP is ratified, uh, we never know what would happen to the politics. Uh, but still, uh, if it's ratified, uh, my uh, sense is that it's going to impose a lot of impact on Japan, Korea, uh, China, and FDA. And, but the, uh, my basic point is that after uh, a couple of years where, uh, uh, after, since we started the Japan, Korea, China FDA, things have changed a lot. So uh, the problem is how we will be able to combine our growth strategies with the uh, free, trade ag free trade agreement. So uh, that's a major uh, topic. So of course, the TPP is, is not just a mega FDA, but, uh, but it's a rulemaking process in Asia Pacific regions. And uh, the major issues is not just the tariff, tariff and trade liberalizations, but it's more to reduce the business risk uh, in a comprehensive way. And uh, uh, well, tariff reductions is a very high level. And, uh, but there's uh, many new rules that was brought in in FDA, uh, TPP, like uh, strengthened uh, investor uh, state disputes uh, settlement, and also transparency principles over the uh, um, SBS and other uh, non-tariff uh, non barriers. And also uh, accumulations of rural origin, since this is a free trade agreement, outsiders are ha uh, are have to be excluded from the uh, liberalization program. So we have to define which one is making what what in where. So that is the the root of origins. And we decided to um, in, uh, invite the uh, the accumulations in rural of origins in a very generous way, so that we could cover both Japan and U.S. has a very stretched out outside network. I mean the production network. So for us, the uh, generous accumulations of rural of origin was a very strategic part of protecting our uh, overseas investment. And of course, on the other hand, the US uh, side had a kind of political resistance over the uh, generous accumulations of uh, origin, rural of origin because they are imported massively from the Asia Pacific. But uh, we just succeeded in having some uh, giving each other. So uh, basically, TPP is quite high uh, in terms of liberalization rate. And, uh, but the uh, uh, so, but anyway, uh, if only it ratified, so uh, that the TPP is going to have some certain impact and, uh, in terms of the whole uh, regional uh, integrations in Asia, Asia Pacific. And in my sense, one of the key countries is Vietnam. And uh, Vietnam has turned to be a kind of leveraging uh, country because, uh, well, for instance, Thailand is competing uh, recently in Vietnam in inviting foreign direct investment. And also Thailand is such a, a high, um, this one, okay. Uh, Thailand has uh, such a biggest industrial accumulations uh, outside TPP member. So if the uh, Vietnam is there, Thailand has to compete with uh, Vietnam so that uh, they'll be more attracted in coming into TPP. And also Philippines. Of course, Philippines has a special geopolitics uh, with China, frankly, and also uh, another competitions, uh, FDI competitions with Vietnam. And also interesting countries is Korea. Actually, Korea has uh, already uh, accumulated such a huge, accum uh, huge production base in electronics in Vietnam, and uh, uh, they, well, the politicians, especially in Korea, is always screaming that we are competing so se severely with Japan. But uh, since Japan is a TPP member and uh, uh, export from Japan to Vietnam is covered by TPP, while the uh, Korean export to Vietnam is is not covered. So that means the Korean export might, might have a fair uh, high chances of being is discriminated against their Japanese export. So then the Korea war is, has been under the pressure. And of course, if the Korea comes, Taiwan is also under the certain pressures because uh, Taiwan is also competing with uh, uh, Korea. So that's the whole uh, domino kind of relationship uh, in Asia Pacific now. And so what's going to happen among Japan, Korea, China? 
So after all, many people believe in that in the end, Korea will be coming to TPP. And that means, uh, well, Japan-Korea FDA under the TPP framework, and maybe Korea-Mexico FDA. But it's in a very high standard, starting the immediate tariff eliminations of almost uh, 87%. And the uh, CORAS, uh, Korea US FDA, uh, should go through s certain um, re uh, process for revisions because US, recently US Congress has got very uh, skeptical about the Korean currency policies and the uh, 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 competition policies. So, but it, it might be that difficult. Uh, and also bilateral pact, uh, uh, there is, so if the Korea, com Korea comes to TPP, there is a large gap uh, between China-Korea FDA and Japan-Korea FDA under the TPP framework. And uh, uh, well, specifically bilaterally um, uh, between Japan and Korea, uh, it used to be said that Korea has a comparative advantage in agriculture. But uh, Japan has gained, uh, well, well, relatively, but uh, I mean, the uh, recovers the confidence over the uh, reforms in the agricultural sector uh, thanks to TPP because uh, TPP is still the highest standard of FDA for Japan. So still, we are not very happy about that level, but uh, still, we we could succeed at in liberalizing, very liberalizing the agricultural sector. So uh, there's a five sectors of exclusions, rice, wheat, beef, pork, and dairy goods and sugars. But uh, uh, I don't think it, it, it would be a, uh, such a big probability that Japan agrees uh, with Korea, say that uh, we will exclude everything of the five items. And uh, uh, so that might be politically, it's not an economic issue between Japan and Korea because agriculture is not a strategic sector, but politically it's a huge sector. So uh, that might be the uh, one uh, issues. And uh, uh, so, but anyway, there is no Japan, Korea, China, FDA, uh, so we've got to be serious about the uh, new strategies as Professor Fan mentioned. So uh, what will happen to RCEP? Uh, well, RCEP still remains as a very low level of uh, liberalizations, and uh, uh, what's annoying about RCEP is the presence of India, and <laughs> India is really lagging behind. Even that India's is uh, far below in terms of the uh, liberalizations, in if even compared to ASEAN. So uh, India's is one thing, and uh, China seems to be more interested in cooperation rather than liberalization after AIIB. So uh, we, of course, do hope, as we've done in the past, Korean, uh, Chinese economists have, uh, will be able to do their best in combining the uh, restructuring process with the uh, uh, outside pressure coming from RCEP or TPP, because you've made it such a success uh, when you entered into the WTO. <coughs> so many people were against it, but as a result, China has been performing very well after the entrance in, uh, with the WTO, and many businesses have grown up, and the uh, restructuring was, uh, was done in a certain way while just keep maintaining the relatively higher growth. So I think uh, China should go back to the uh, successful uh, 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 experience uh, in combining the uh, restructurings and growth and uh, uh, liberalization program. And uh, uh, another issue, uh, technical issues, is the common tariff. Uh, China and Korea has been saying, even in the RCEP, that the, uh, there won't be no common tariff, and the uh, tariff should be independent of each other. And uh, Japan and ASEAN is more uh, uh, interested in having a common tariff, in, like in a TPP. Everybody uses the same tariff, and that makes sim things simpler and uh, more transparent, so that's the another issues. So uh, in terms of Japan, I think after spending so many years, finally I think we have certain fairly calculated good interface between the growth strategies and TPP, and that's why we could decide to have a TPP. Um, so uh, for instance, um, well, 
One issue is that there are many people who believe in that Japan, Korea, China are fiercely competing each other in especially hardware manufacturing, like uh, shipbuilding, or steel, or petrochemical, or electronics, or, or even automobiles, or whatever. But uh, Japan is really getting out of this uh, price competition at least. And then, uh, but we have to feed our people anyway, so how we are going to do it? Well, one thing is that uh, our, um, the manufacturing for Japanese economies is really minor. It's below 20%, it's maybe 17 or 16%, which is n nothing really different from the US uh, positions in terms of manufacturing. So we are pretty much service sector economies already. And uh, manufacturing sectors is still the most competitive sector in Japan, but it's, well, during the high-end uh, high period, it's all gone uh, uh, from Japan. So it's stretched out mostly in Asia. So that's why we need uh, a TPP or RCEP or the uh, regional kind of comprehensive and uh, regional kind of coverage. And FDIs is the most important things, rural origin, competition policies among the members, intellectual property rights, and mutual rec recognition agreement. And these are the things that is very related with the Japanese growth strategy, like Internet of Things, even a fintech, or the uh, agriculture plant, or the next generation uh, infrastructures, or whatever. So that's why we are sticking these uh, items in an FDA, rather than tariff reductions. And also, uh, since we are the largest investors in Asia, of course we are very interested in protecting our invest investors' rights. So ISDS was a, a major issue uh, in TPP, and also uh, movement of pers persons. And this is, this is turns to be a crucial thing uh, for Japan, because now we are getting very different than before, well, probably I, I have to say this. Uh, so how we are going to try to grow, I should say, uh, we should be more based on, no, uh, on the knowledge intensive uh, technologies. And also since our, uh, we are very much in shortage in terms of not a simple labor, but especially uh, the uh, talented uh, scientists. And uh, we have to invite a lot of people from Asia to work for us. So knowledge is most, impo uh, most important things. And also the competitions is differentiation competitions rather than the price competition anymore. So that's why the movement of persons is very important. And also, uh, well, the CJK um, a debate is very much sometimes still based on the uh, classical nation state, nation competition, that kind of ideas because of the nationalism. But uh, we have to get out of it, and uh, we have to be more seriously concerned about how to promote the industrial cluster uh, across the border. So which companies come from which countries probably should not be regarded as important anymore. So we have, that's why we have to abandon about the uh, 20th century kind of industrial policies, uh, um, that kind of thing. And also, uh, we are very much pushing the small and medium-sized companies' growth. And uh, global companies are okay, so they, they should do their best in, in, on their own. But uh, SME's uh, globalization program is very much uh, behind the schedule, so we have to push this sector. And uh, so in terms of hardware uh, trade, it's getting more and more horizontal trade rather than the vi uh, vertical trade in Asia. So if we are happy about the competition policies or industrial adjustment program, say for instance, if Sharp or Toshiba had to go certain bankrupting process, well, we should never ask uh, which companies is going to take over it. But uh, employment is inc uh, if the employment is maintained, we should be happy about this. So uh, that's the sort of way that we are now trying to go. So uh, FDI. Interactive FDI is one of the most crucial strategies for us now. And uh, we finally decided to be so serious about taking in uh, foreign direct investment. So hopefully um, competitive companies, not only from the US and Australia, but also from China, Korea, or any countries, should have a good business uh, with us. 
So uh, this means the, uh, in terms of the economic relationship with the most Asian emerging economies, this is the end of the uh, flying geese patterns of uh, relationship where the Japan's only uh, invest and the uh, trade is very much dominated by vertical uh, division of labor. So uh, this is also the end of the hardware manufacturing and uh, we should be more uh, interested in IoT, like a big data-based uh, uh, kind of uh, business. And also interactive exchange, well, especially the talent and the peoples and ideas and knowledge is the most important things. So I think if we follow this, we would be able to have some very uh, dynamic uh, uh, Japan-Korea-China relationship. Uh, well, first we may, uh, we, we should uh, have to have some better dialogue uh, in sharing growth strategies in relations to the uh, liberalization program because hardware does not mean any, uh, so much than before. So uh, even a Chinese economy is shifting rapidly into a knowledge-based, service-based economies. And uh, uh, so in that way, uh, we should do that. So also uh, intellectual, intellectual property right protections is important and we have to avoid about industrial policies. And uh, uh, also another thing what we can do is to cooperations under the WTO framework. Uh, Japan, Korea, China is strongly supporting IT sector by ITA, uh, IT agreement in the WTO, which has been very, very successful. And uh, uh, we still have, will be able to co cooperate in terms of service sector, TISA, uh, in the WTO, or maybe even anti-counterfeit uh, trading uh, program. Thank you very much.